Hi everyone, welcome to the second video in our series of database tutorials for LIS 9003. Today we're going to be looking at two of the most powerful science databases available to us, Web of Science and Scopus. There are a ton of different ways to use these databases, you wouldn't believe it, but of course we're not going to have time to cover them all, so I encourage you to make good use of the help sections of both websites, which are usually located in the top right portion of the page. So to get to Web of Science and Scopus, start at the Western Library's homepage, lib.uwo.ca, navigate to the databases page, click the WRS to browse to the databases, or type the names into the search field and hit enter. So what are these things? Both Web of Science and Scopus cover the hard sciences, social sciences, health sciences, arts and humanities. They index books, journals, conference proceedings, and other stuff. So on the one hand, these are just two really good multidisciplinary databases with high quality resources, good for people writing their papers and you answering their reference questions. But these databases are also more than that. They are what we call citation databases. So our first question is, what is a citation database? Citation databases offer an index of citations between publications and a way to establish which documents cite which other documents. So think of an actual web. You have all these strands connecting different nodes. And in this case, each node might be an author or article, and each strand is a citation that connects one author or article to another. This is a great way to find other articles related to your search topic, and also to see how research has evolved over time. How you use Web of Science and Scopus is going to depend on who you are and what you're trying to accomplish. As a student or researcher, you might find one really good article and want to find more just like it. Or you might be new to the field and you want to know who are the most influential writers on a particular topic and which papers are considered seminal to the field. An author who wants to get their research published might use Web of Science and Scopus to determine which journals would be a good fit and which journals have the biggest impact in their field. Or they might use these databases to connect with other researchers interested in the same topic as they are so that they can collaborate on a project. An employer at a university might consult these databases to learn more about candidates for a faculty position, such as how many articles they've published and the impact they've had in their field of study. Today we'll do some searches that measure an article's impact, an author's impact, and finally a journal's impact. To measure an article's impact, usually we decide that the papers with the most citations are considered impactful. So to find out an article's impact, you can perform a search and then sort the results by time cited. In Web of Science, you can even refine your results by hotly cited or hot papers in the field, which is a great way to find seminal works. To measure author impact, Web of Science and Scopus use several different metrics, but the one you'll see most often is called the H score or the H index. The H score tries to measure how influential an author is in their field by rewarding those who have multiple articles with multiple citations over those who have a single article with a large number of citations. Sure, that article with a lot of citations might be a super impactful article, but when deciding who is the more impactful author, productivity and engagement count. So how is the H score calculated? The very short explanation is that an author's age score is the number of published articles that have at least that number of citations. If you look at this example, we see that Professor Rothbauer has an age score of five because her top five articles have five or more citations. The same can't be said of the number six. Her top six articles do not have six or more citations. So the statement isn't true, therefore her age score is five. If this doesn't make sense, it doesn't matter too much. Just know that the higher the age score, the better. When it comes to measuring journal impact, Scopus and Web of Science use different proprietary metrics. Scopus uses site score, Web of Science uses journal impact factor. The calculation for these scores are even more complicated than age score. And like the age score, all you need to know is that the higher the number, the better. So let's head to the databases now. We'll start with Web of Science and we'll just do a basic search for climate change. Okay, so a ton of articles. What we're gonna do is up here, we'll do sort. Oh, it's already sorted for us. So sorted by time cited. So you'll see the first few results have several thousands of citations. So we consider these articles to be influential in the field. Like I said, Web of Science has this other option too. 
highly cited in the field and hot papers in the field. The difference between this regular way of sorting the citations is that these have a ton of citations, but they're just a teensy bit older. So 2012, 2003, 2003, 2002. So if you click these buttons, okay, we'll just click into it. Let's say hot papers in the field. That's going to refine it down to 108 articles. Okay, so it's fewer citations, yes, but it's also super recent stuff, 2019, 18, 19. Okay, so that's the difference there. I'm going to head back. So at the base, at the first page, um, also check out this analyze results button here. So basically this just captures all the information and all the linkages um, and it sort of just displays it in a way that's easy to visually understand. So you um, can see so which authors are sort of prolific in the field of climate change. Um, so Mr. Lee has 510 articles. You know, so like there's a good thing to know. Also the organizations. So which organizations are most interested in studying climate change? University of California, Chinese Academy of Sciences, et cetera. Okay. So again, more citations, the better for an article. Scopus is much the same. So if you start at the documents page and just do a basic search for climate change, is it already sorted? It is already sorted by highest. So again, the first few articles we consider to be quite impactful. Well, Scopus unfortunately doesn't have that option for highly cited. Uh, so you just sort of have to refine the date range as you see fit. Okay, so that's sort of measuring an article's impact in the field. Now we're going to talk about measuring author impact. So we'll start at Web of Science and go back to the home page. And instead of basic search, we'll do an author search. So if you just wanted to find information about an author, so we'll put in Professor Rothbauer's name. You can either put the first name or just the initial and then hit find. And you wanna make sure you have the right person. So Western University is the correct affiliation. Okay, but this is Western University too. So for whatever reason, her record has been split up. So I'm gonna hit select all and view combined record. And this just sort of gives you a quick at a glance view of her, the research that uh, she's published according to Web of Science and her H index. You could get to the papers that have cited her work. Okay, so it's, it's a helpful thing. And Scopus, again, it's the same thing. Back to the home page. Instead of documents, click authors, put in the name. Okay, so hers are all um, connected into one record, so that's great. So I'm going to click the box here, and then I want to uh, view her citation overview. Okay, so this again is just the articles that she's published. Um, it gives her H score up here. If you're observant, you may have noticed that her H index or H score is five according to Scopus and three according to Web of Science. That's just because Web of Science and Scopus index different journals. So neither one of them probably has the full picture of her research. They can only use to calculate what they have access to. So some articles are gonna fall through the cracks. Okay, so that's authors in both websites. So the last thing we're gonna talk about is measuring, um, yeah the impact that different journals have in their field of study. So for Web of Science, it's not actually dependent. You don't have to go to the home page for it. It's up here in this black bar, journal citation reports. If you wanted to find information on a particular journal, you could browse by journal. But let's say I have a, a student come into the library. She wants to publish her library and information science research. She wants to know what's the most prominent, impactful journal in her field. So we're going to browse by category. Oh, OK, so it's already done it because I just did it a few minutes ago. But you want to go into select categories. And then I just know from searching that it's it's not library and information science, it's information. Here it is, information science and library science. And then I'd hit submit. Here it is. 
So you're going to get uh, to different pages depending on what you click here. For our purposes, click on the, the linked number um, under journals. So that's how many journals they consider to be under the umbrella of information science and library science. So we'll click that. Okay, so it has all the LIS journals uh, in order from highest to lowest journal impact factor. And so according to Web of Science, International Journal of Information Management is the most prominent journal in the field. So let's see if Scopus agrees. So to find this page in Scopus, it's actually called Sources up here. Okay, and the subject area is library. Good. So library and information sciences, apply. And we see ordered from highest to lowest site score this time that inter, inter, International Journal of Information Management is also the most prominent uh, journal article according, according to Scopus. So I'd be pretty confident in telling the person in the library that International Journal of Information Management would be a great art, uh, journal to which she could submit her research. Okay, so again, that's just a very brief introduction to a few of the things you can do on these uh, on these websites in these databases. If you have any questions, please feel free to email simslib at uw.ca and we'd be happy to help. Thanks for watching.